All right, it's now time for Interactive. Remember, you can download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play or the App Store and watch a variety of live sports while on the go and communicate with us through the live chat feature. Also, check out our clips on X, Instagram and YouTube. So we start this afternoon by taking some comments from cricket fans to Roland Butcher, who is no longer a West Indies selector. Butcher's contract as a selector expired on December 31, 2023 and was not renewed. So Jason Jacobs says, great news, Desmond Haynes should go too. Kurt Gomes, Viv Richard should be on that committee. He surely knows great talent and who's dedicated to the sport. Riza Abbasali, best wishes, Sir Roland. Jeff Austin, Windies have just won the ODI in T20 series against England with teams selected by the current selectors. Upon what basis should they resign? Mm. Yes. Well, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Desmond Haynes because his contract runs until June. Yes. Um, I've always said on this show that I don't think West Indies defeats are, are solely the... Selectors. an issue with, with selectors. Um, there have been some selections in the past year that we didn't agree with, which we have said on the show. Um, so, you know, I, I, I have to accept that if, you know, Roland Butcher's um, contract has ended at the end of December and it's not renewed, I, I can't say I have a major problem uh, having, I mean, they would know why they have made that decision. Uh, but they have done well in a lot of series, as Reds had said earlier on, that um, they won a lot of series this year. So in, in, in many ways, the, the, the selection of the teams have, have been okay. There, there have been some that I, we found, as we said, the Darren Bravos non-selection for the ODI series against England, we thought was shocking. So, um, you know, I would count them, I would count, I would mark against them for that. But I don't know that as selectors that they have done poorly overall, but as I said, I, I, I can't have a major issue if they don't want to um, renew Roland Butcher's contract. Yeah, we always said on this show that, you know, the selectors always have a very difficult job yeah. because, of course, you know, you have a pool of players and for quite some time, you know, we didn't have a big, big pool to choose from. So, of course, you know, the fans would be really upset if their favourites are not selected and sometimes they have also difficult decisions to make. So for me, we'll wait and see what happens with Desmond Haynes. But, you know, again, I agree with you as in, you know, I don't really have a major problem with what has happened. Well, we're going to move along now, Lance, and we're going to talk about the West Indies captain, the women's captain, Hayley Matthews, who has been shortlisted for the Women's T20 International Player of the Year honours in the International Cricket Council's 2023 awards. Elise Perry, Sophie Ecclestone and Chamari Atapatu have also been shortlisted. All right, so the poem says Elise Perry. So these are what persons have selected, right? So the poem says Elise Perry. Aaron John says Hayley Matthews is very good. She can win it. Ziki says, as an Aussie fan, Hayley Matthews easily. Surreal says, Chamari Atapatu. Joss Babar goes for Sophie Ecclestone. Cricket Lover says, this one is tough. One of them is a close competition between Chamari and Hayley. As for me, I would choose Hayley. Do we? Do we? Mm. All right, so I can see and sense a lot of love for Hayley Matthews, mm. even from the Aussies. Yeah, you know what? She has had a good year, a really, really good year. She's ended the year as the number one T20 all-rounder, and um, I think she's in with a shot. Um, Elise Perry has been pretty solid for the Aussies, although because of an injury, she hasn't been able to bowl. So towards the back end of the season, they have been um, playing her just as, as, as a batter because she hasn't been able because of the injury to bowl and she's more of a bowler than a batter so um, and she's part of the Australian world number one and championship winning team so um, maybe Perry might have the edge but uh, uh, um, Ecclestone is pretty solid as well very consistent with both bat and ball. Mm. 
Yeah, I, you know, she's, she's number one bowler in ODIs and T20 as well. It's going to be a tough call. Hayley Matthews did well as a singular performer for the West Indies because there weren't many West Indians that played well internationally this year outside of Hayley Matthews, so she stands out. And people like her. Yeah, she's... That's, that's where the comments are coming from. People uh, like who they like, and we've always spoken about that on the show. Yeah, yeah. So I think she has a shot, but Eccleston and Ellie's Perry may be the favourite ones. Yeah, well, we'll wait and see. All right, well... Borussia Dortmund are reportedly keen to finalise a loan deal for Man United forward Jadon Sancho to Twitter we go. Arthur says moves back and forth teams, he, he, his career much like Pogba's. Klish Ramdeen says that this makes sense for Sancho as he can play football again. Manny, another talent ruined by Manchester United. THF Moyes, if you remember how United fans were so eager for this transfer, it's sad how the whole thing ended. Simi, Sancho back to Dortmund, just feels right, he's going to do incredibly well. Alright, so some feels it's Jaden Sancho's issue because he moves back and forth too much. A lot of people are thinking it's the best in the best interest of Jaden Sancho. I think so because you can't be playing for you can't be representing yeah. a club like Manchester United Lance getting no play time and of course your stocks are going down. He's a young talented footballer. I think he has a lot of potential and over this unfortunate situation not getting to play is not good enough. So for me, I would say Jaden Sancho back to Borussia Dortmund. Thumbs up. Yeah, I, I think it's a logical move because he hasn't played for Man United since late August and his relationship with uh, manager Eric Ten Hag isn't, isn't improving. No. So they're, 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 at a, they're, they're, they're in a standoff that at the moment doesn't appear as if you know, there's any move being made either way. So hugely disappointing for Man United because they had spent so much money for him, £73 million. And they're not even doing well. So yeah. for me, yeah, to have a talented player like Jadon Sancho on the sidelines because yeah. of that, your... For, for his own career, it doesn't make sense. The I... limbo situation for him doesn't make sense. So I can see, I can see the Borussia Dortmund move happening in January. Yeah, I also am very disappointed in Eric Ten Hag because I feel as a manager and as an older person, like... There, there are ways to manage things and I find this to be a bit arrogant, Lance, because, okay, I get it, Jaden Sancho did not apologise, he's a young player and sometimes young people do dumb things, but for to be managing a team like Manchester United and for them not to be doing well and for having potential on the sidelines in the form of Jaden Sancho, I feel like that the man management of that player is not done well. Well, it's easier to criticise his, his man management because... The team the, is doing uh, badly. The, 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 there is not a win-win situation that has been made out of it, which is what good managers usually are able to do. You know, find difficult situations and, 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 and make a winning situation out of it. But on, on the other side of the coin, if it is that um, Jaden Sancho is being rebellious and is unmoving in his position, a manager in Ten Hag's position that has already made his position clear would look soft if he backs down on his position. So I think that's the position that Ten Hag is being caught in, that he wants to set a standard for behavioural patterns of his players. And if he goes easy on Sancho on this one, it, it could be viewed as setting a precedence for difficult situations or similar situations coming up again in the future. So. Um, the, the whole situation is disappointing for Man United, of course, but I, I'm not sure if I would criticize Ten Hag on, on his handling of this one. I'm not sure. Don't you feel that a precedence is only set if a team is doing well? And when no, a team is doing well... No, but that's the unfortunate side of it, Mariah. You, when, when a team loses, it's easy because of the emotion to criticize. But if the manager has laid his law down to say this is what he wants, he's the man in charge. The buck stops with him. And if the players is rebellious and um, non-conforming, then I think the manager has to be strong. Yeah, it is unfortunate, but the truth is, 
They're only judged by your performances. And I know. I realize that you know he he is in a he is in a, a dodgy position. Because there was a point because... he was getting a lot of support and respect <laughs> because Manchester United were turning things around. But the moment you stop winning, yeah. people stop forgiving you. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the unfortunate situation. Well, Ten Hag will have to shoulder that responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to move on from that discussion. We're heading to track and field. And a Trinidad and Tobago sprinter, Misha Liayi, said she was surprised to receive the TNT Olympic Committee's the TTOC Sportswoman of the Year Award for 2023 during the 29th annual award ceremony at the Hyde Regency in Port of Spain on Friday night, while Nicholas Paul won the Sportsman of the Year. So Lance, what's your take? Well, to be honest, I understand Michelle Lee Yee feeling a little surprised by winning this award because she underperformed this year. She uh, didn't do well this year. She failed to make the final at the Budapest World Championship and she didn't go anywhere close to her personal best times of 1082 and 2225, which are national records for TNT. In fact, she didn't go sub 11 and she didn't go anywhere near sub 22 so by her standards she did not perform well this year um, I think she won a bronze medal at the Pan American Games but that was just about it so I, I understand based on her level that if she matches what she produced in 2023 and sees a reward of a sportsman who was one of the year honor it, it would come to her as a bit of a surprise. There was pre the ceremony at the Hyatt Regency that Tenille Campbell, the cyclist who competed in the Tour de France as the first woman from TNT, and I think it was reported as the first black woman to compete in the Tour de France, um, would have been a candidate. But um, I guess when the criteria was studied carefully, no one topped Michelle Liaye. But I understand Michelle feeling a little surprised because um, she has had far, far better years than this. Yeah. <laughs> and Nicholas Ball walking away with Sportsman. Oh, that was predictable. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's one of the best track sprinters in the world at the moment, not just the Caribbean. So it is, um, it is, it, that was a foregone conclusion that Nicholas Ball would have taken that. He, and he's a medal prospect for the Olympics in Paris as well. That's, that's how good Nicholas Ball is. Yeah, um, uh, and Mariah, before our show wraps up today, um, we spoke to Brent Sancho yesterday about Baz Diopande's passing, um, a stalwart in the political uh, landscape of, of TNT. I know when he was prime minister, you were a toddler, maybe? No, no, no. I know, I remember his speeches very, very well. Yes, and you do. So let me just say that, one, the country has, of course, lost a spectacular person and, of course, a brilliant politician because growing up, I would follow all of his speeches because they were so witty, to be honest, Lance. He made me fall in love with politics. I love listening to him debate against, of course, the late Manning yeah. as well. Patrick you know, Manning, yeah. Yeah, because he passed away also. And both of them went to Presentation College. The thing about um, Basse Pande is, apart from being a great politician, he was just a very fun, loving and witty person. Yes. My best friend, Shalini, is actually related to Basse Pande. So I got the opportunity to have, you know, one-off conversations with him whenever he attended events at her house. So for me, you know, he's such a jovial man. Also, Lance, always seen at all the cricketing events, having a good time dancing. So I will say um, the Caribbean, by extension, has lost a brilliant man and his leg legacy will continue to live on because he has books, he has his daughter, Michaela Pande, and there's so much. I wish I had much more time to talk about, but we're out of time. So, of course, I'm sending my love to the entire Pande family. We're out of time, viewers, but I have a lot of time with you. I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. <laughs>